Part of building the same model a few times over is learning some of the nuances of the model. This particular model here, if you can see here, there's a crack. It, it hairline cracked up this way. And the rudder, or the stabilizer, became loose, so I had to cut it open on the bottom and then do, you can't see it, but do some bracing on the underside. Well, we don't want that to happen on our on my new Thunderbolt. So I've devised a plan to more hold the rudder in a stable position back there. This block of wood is solid and it's going to be placed on the uh, elevator stabilizer just like that. Turn this camera. And I feel that when I butt these two joints together and glue them, it will hold this better, I hope. So, this was a just a kind of an update on, on different thoughts that you might have on making something work because obviously after building three of the other Thunderbolts and they all cracked in the same spot I don't want that to happen on my on my fourth one so not only am I going to be gluing this piece on but I'm also going to be gluing in some 16th stringers on the inside here there'll be a stringer Oh, every half inch. So, let's say three stringers in there. And that'll help stiffen that up as well. And then I probably will put some carbon fiber over the top too. Now, the problem is you can't get so much stuff back here that it weighs a ton because, you know, we're... I'm not looking for this to be a really light model, to be honest with you, because we're at 30 ounces as it sits right here with no paint on it. So I only have, you know, if it gets if it gets to 40 ounces finished, that's a 60 ounce model. So anything over 40 ounces, uh, you know, is no, not really any good. So I have to keep this at 40 ounces, and there's a lot of stuff still to go on it. So, this was just an update. It wasn't a uh, instructional video or anything. I just want to let you guys share what I've got in mind for strengthening, strengthening up the elevator. There's a lot of area here. And uh, it came out perfectly straight. I did have, I did have to cut the, the stabilizer out of the... Uh, out of the fuselage from the last video for the simple fact I needed to steam it again it was warped a little bit so I steamed it in the opposite direction it's straight now it stayed you know for the whole period so we're in good shape there if you have any questions on how the for you know how to do something all you have to do is ask me on the form you can ask me via email. You can ask a question on this uh, on this video. But the, it's most important to like, subscribe, and share my videos. I need you to share them on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, all the other social media accounts. Help this channel grow. And that would be surely appreciated. So, that's where we're at. I didn't do much work on it today. Um, I want to make sure that you guys understand the spar that, or the, uh, the cap that goes in on top of the wing here. 
and I'll probably show that uh, in a later segment of a video but it, it has to go on the top and bottom of the wing in order to keep that bell crank from pulling out and that includes the same with the beam uh, wing that I just built and all other wings the most important part is the the uh, locator between the fuselage sides you will never pull the bell crank out of an airplane that way never and I've seen some of the top guys at the Nationals pull bell cranks out of their airplanes. I, I don't, for the life of me, I don't get it, but whatever. <laughs> so anyway, like, subscribe, share. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm sorry I didn't get a big video up today, but I promised that I'd get at least one up every day, and I had some other things going on. So until I see you tomorrow, I'll try to make a video tonight on on this and on gluing the uh, on gluing the pieces in the back. So we'll try to get that done for you. So until we see you again, fair winds, tight lines. See ya.